Good evening, everyone. My name is Jamie Womack Williams. I'm the State Ed Issues Coordinator for Texas AFT. The Bridges Institute for Professional Development brings us the fourth in our six part series on meditation and mindfulness. Tonight's topic is heartfulness, forgiveness. Hang on just a minute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Our presenter tonight is Radula Kamra. If you've been here for the last three classes, you are familiar with Radula. She is a current classroom teacher at the in Houston ISD at the DAEP campus. Oh, yeah. Find somewhere comfortable in your home to sit for our session tonight and remember at the end we will be giving away three more prizes some really great prizes um, so make sure you stick around to see if you are a winner in order to be entered into next week's drawing you need to attend at least 30 minutes of the session but we hope you stay the entire time because it's a lot of useful and valuable information i know i've personally learned so much from radula and appreciate everything that she um, has giving us has given us through this process. So I am going to turn it over to Radula. Thank you, Jamie. So uh, let's uh, review a little bit from last week. Uh, if you guys don't mind typing your answers in the chat box. Did you notice a change in your emotions um, with journaling or without journaling? If so, at what pace did they change? And what, was it obvious to you how you were feeling? And how did you decide what you were feeling? And uh, How were the mind and body interacting to create emotional experience? You may answer all of them, or you may choose one question to answer. We can play two minutes of music and give them time to answer those questions. So this week, we're going to start with the meditation session, 
correctly. Um, and I will be giving some instructions and after that we will have some quiet time. So this week we're going to work with the unique quality of mindfulness practice, which is equanimity. And um, basically we are asking the mind or awareness to do two activations for us. First is sensing, or you can say directing the mind to rest in the present with an aid of an anchor that we can feel to be present with. And second, as we bring awareness into present and simultaneously allowing whatever is in the system to relax and letting it go, letting it move through the system with less resistance, like sensations, emotions, thoughts, images. So as our practice deepens, we become super highway for all of that information. So we're going to explore what that feels like. You may find a sitting or lying down posture, whichever feels most comfortable to you at this point. This can also be done on the chair. So the most important thing is the feeling of grounding. And do a quick check of the body, the way we did in our body scan last time. You should do this every time before you begin your formal practice. So ask yourself, am I in a position to ground easily? Or is there something going on in the body? So when you ask yourself that you are ready to ground yourself, where all of the touch points can sink in the gravitational field. And if you are in a chair posture, make sure both feet are touching ground, feet are shoulder width apart and sit bones are touching the bottom of the chair, hands resting on your legs, spine upright, head gently floating. Just by getting in the posture, you will feel a bit of a shift in the awareness. For almost all of us who are in schools, we all have very, very busy lives with significant number of demands, like walking with the chronic amount of nervous system activation. And most of the time, it's like, like one teacher said once, it's we are in a flight or flight mode all the time. So always, uh, we are always uh, under a little bit of stress we're stressed out, that is the state of, that stressed out state is called the state of low grade activation of our nervous system. And that is like a new norm nowadays in any job. And you notice this when you sit down to do this practice. So first thing we feel is our leftovers of our nervous system impulses. For most of us, after having multiple cups of coffee in the morning, no time for lunch, rushed through several meetings, parent conferences, grading papers, and we're not attending to our system. So when we sit down and bring awareness to the system, the first thing we sense is the backlog in the system. 
And for that same reason, people don't want to practice meditation or mindfulness because it feels very unpleasant. It, like it, not in the solar plexus or bre your breath is shallow. Thoughts are agitated. Sometimes uh, body sweating in different places and digestion is messy and grumbly. All these are signs of chronic activation of the nervous system. So we need to allow this activation to self-resolve. And just by getting in the posture, meditative posture, mindfulness posture, our system starts to relax. And combination of grounding your body physically along with the mindfulness practice starts an unbelievable purification in the system. A system knows how to recalibrate itself if we can be with it and let it do the cleaning or cleansing and the recalibration process. So use your body as an anchor Just the sense of listening to the inner body and the field of sensations from feet to all the way up to your head and pay more attention to the limbs. All are alive, connected to the center of the body. It's all felt in space. Okay, so all the major systems, joints, um, diaphragm, nothing is uh, overly contracted. So feel your body as a highway of the sensations. And everything is allowed to move, your stress, your emotions. And you are much closer to them at this point. And there is a spaciousness. And you will feel where there's, there's a space around in your body and you feel the fluids around it. So whole system is kind of open and grounded as you imagine, everything is moving along with your awareness. So lack of attention will hold your stress response in places. As we bring attention to our body, everything is relaxed and moving. Just by sitting and grounding, we are learning to develop that container of our body, uh, of sensations and emotions. Just be with that even if you have unpleasant sense, sensations, just be with it. And the, the, that sense of leftovers, keep relaxing and keep grounding. And just keep watching. Sitting like this for a while can naturally self-resolve overactive mind and mind quieten down a little and a little more space is felt. If there was a no, knot in your solar plexus, but now 
a little more space is felt around that knot. You feel the fluids moving around that knot. So sensations are not stuck anymore. That's what it means. Finally, just allowing yourself to encourage equanimity of the nervous system. Imagine sitting on a bank of a river and all the emotions are flowing. So the river is the river of emotions. And what's in the river is unobstructed and unrestricted. And everything will resolve in its own time. And your only job is to witness it. And you as a watcher or observer and not obstructing the flow of the river. Stay with this river for next three minutes and we'll play some music so you can work through it. You may open your eyes and come back to your normal slowly and we can continue with this.
So let's talk a little bit about power of gratitude. So without stopping and paying attention, we miss a lot of life's little gifts and treasures. So we acclimatize to goodness and forget its present. So often we are stressed or are in a bad mood. The things that irritate us become more heightened in our consciousness because media operates in a similar way often focusing on all that is going badly without presenting a balanced perspective of all the good in the world. So the point is not to be in denial about the oppression or harm, but to open to the fuller picture, which includes compassionate action, forgiveness, and the friendliness of people around us to help balance and open to a wider view of on life we turn to gratitude so to practice gratitude is to intentionally focus on and appreciate the things that give meaning to life So how do we cultivate positive emotions? So experiencing negative emotions is a part of being human. Um, at times, these emotions are necessary and very useful, such as when danger is perceived. In the brain, the sympathetic nervous system is stimulated, allowing you to react more quickly fight or flight or freeze to a perceived threat. Uh, however, when negative emotions become chronic or are contextually inappropriate, they can lead to declining psychological well-being and stress-related illnesses. So positive and expansive uh, feelings such as love, compassion, and appreciation uh, stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system, which is rest and digest. Um, so thoughts to thoughts which are complementary to the sympathetic nervous system. So researchers have um, found that the cultivation of positive emotions not only increases joy, interest, and contentment. At the time of cultivation, it, is, it also becomes a platform of experience for individuals to rely on during times of distress and mental un, unease. So practicing gratitude has been found to have very profound effects on people. So in an experimental um, comparison conducted at um, UC Davis, um, subjects who were asked to keep weekly gratitude journals demonstrated higher levels of well-being and they reported fewer physical symptoms, felt better about their lives as a whole, and were more optimistic about the upcoming week compared to those who recorded hassles or neutral life events. Um, we can share that article with you. Uh, a related benefit was observed in the realm of personal goal attainment and participants who kept gratitude lists were more likely to have made progress towards important personal goals, even academic, interpersonal, and health-based. So over a two-month period of uh, data was compared uh, of the subjects in, an ex in that experimental group. 
and we can uh, share that article in the chat box with you. So um, this is what you will need. This, this is a, like a kind of a journal exercise. So we started talking about journal last class. So if you have that, or you can even uh, do it just for the practice, just for like a, to do this exercise, you can even open up another uh, Word page. Uh, it, your, your journal can be electronic. Uh, so in your notebook or journal, just take five minutes to, I think we'll take three minutes. Uh, three minutes to list the things for which you are grateful. Your list can be inspired by major components of your life, such as family, friends, shelter, education, etc., or subtler things like, such as warmth of the sun on your skin, the smell of dinner, being cooked, or kindness of a stranger. So just take two or three minutes to write something. So let's continue with this and you can uh, do that uh, at your own time. Start doing that and see what it brings to you. So in week one, we spoke about three characteristics of mindfulness. We talked about intentionality to be attentive, openness, which was to be present in the moment and observation what is happened instead of being judgmental. So this week, we will be studying kindness of the heart, a practice closely connected to the quality of openness. So think back to the last week's practice where you were asked to notice your emotional body. It is uh, very common that when an unpleasant emotion such as anger is felt, there is a sense of body contracting. Just like the sensation in our body, the mind also tightens. And it's much harder to be present when our full, with our full experience when that happens. So we experience this when we are in a bad mood and suddenly everything is an annoyance and the universe seems to be against us, the world and our view narrows and it can even feel a little claustrophobic. 
In contrast, when we are experiencing a feeling of open-heartedness, our ability to care for ourselves and others increases. And this openness is often felt in the body and mind as spacious, light, grounded, or relaxed and alert. You may feel this when you witness random acts of goodness, such as one stranger helping another. And we can feel our own heart open to the kindness and our breath deepens and the body relaxes. So some practical steps to incline towards kind of awareness are like the steps are given but I'm kindness is e easy enough to experience when things are going well but what about when they aren't what if you are in a bad mood or feeling stressed with mindfulness we can learn to do so we can learn to hold those contracting experiences with the same quality of openness we feel when we are content. That's part of equanimity. So these are the steps. Um, observe, like notice how you are feeling in your body and mind when something happens and then recognize know what it is you're experiencing for example anger discomfort sadness confusion anxiety and just use anchor words anchor anchor words are very helpful in doing this uh, in um, and accept acknowledge that this is how you are feeling in that moment without extra judgment or needing to change it and then breathe um, allow yourself to really feel that emotion for several breaths. With each breath, give it space by imagining it being held, not by you, but by the whole world. The purpose of this image is to allow the feeling of contraction to loosen up. And then care. Intentionally add qualities of kindness. The way you would with a friend or a small child who came to you upset. So, we're going to do another short session of um, practice, and I'm just going to. Say a few words and then there'll be some silence after that with music. And we'll see how that goes. Um, so in this practice, this is called kindness practice. We're going to work with the quality and feeling of kindness. And it's directed towards us, ourselves, our own life. So it can be done again, sitting down or lying down the way we did before. Uh, lying down would be a better option in this one. So, Keep your one hand on your chest and other one on your stomach. So you're kind of contacting, touching your solar plexus with one hand and uh, abdominal area with the other hand. Can also be done on the chair if you feel comfortable. So that soothing kinesthetic contact can be very powerful for this practice.
first thing we want to know the kindness within the context of mindfulness. It's not an idea. It's deeper than that. So kindness is actually a felt sense. We can use our thoughts to develop and cultivate the feeling of kindness. Kindness is felt in the body. And the way it is done, it can be done different ways. The goal is to feel it in your body. Different people do this differently. So how you access these uh, qualities in your body, is going to be different from other persons. Um, first, whenever you start any practice, just again, ground yourself and do a quick scan of the body. So, to do a quick check of the feeling, do a check with of your hands, making that contact with the body. So first thing we feel is the sense of softening, unconditional invitation throughout the body just to melt and soften. Giving yourself enormous care, all the permission in the world to let go. And acceptance of how your em emotions and physical body contents unconditionally. So feel the radiance of that sensomatic kindness and acceptance and the deepest love you can give to yourself. And feeling of holding yourself. The warmth and acceptance begins to pervade all through the body, through your tissues, every cell in the body deep into the bone marrow's organ system. Saturated with softening attention. Imagine, imagine a sponge soaking up all the water. And same for us. We never give this kind of attention to ourselves. So it's going to, the body is going to take all of it, just like a sponge. So as human beings, our whole system is so hungry for it. So at this point, it begins to permeate the whole body. But just body is just soaking in it. There's no barrier to it. The kindness, the kind of awareness permeates everything. 
in our system. And some of you might find it a little bit hard to sense it in the beginning or hard to evoke those qualities. And it is totally normal. So to help yourself, you can use images and phrases. The words love and kindness. And to permeate, you may use in your mind a little bit more like saying something and stay with the feeling and say, may I be at ease? May I be, may I let completely, completely let go of it? May I be completely absorbed in love? May I be completely open to this kindness? May I be healthy? May I actually be happy? Using phrases will help you will feel, and you can pick one, whichever resonates, or you can make up your own phrase. So it's like an intentional prompt. So moving at your breath, putting intent on that phrase and see what it awakens, what, what is felt in the body, what kind of sense is felt in the body. Do you feel ease? Do you feel feeling of healthiness, kindness? Whatever is working there. Lastly, in your life, and anyone who represents these qualities in your life, somebody who represents these kind of qualities, you can direct your attention to that person. It can be a pet or somebody Somebody you can connect deeply at deeper level can be felt deeply. So evoke those qualities within you through them by thinking about them or by feeling that love. Focusing on what is happening in the felt sense in your body and waking up to that You can consciously feel kindness. And we can play uh, music for three minutes again.
So the heartfulness practice inclines the mind towards kindness and compassion by reflecting on kindness using phrases like we did. And the mental repetition of heartfulness phrases can be used as a daily practice, just like mindful breathing, and also used to help care for yourself when experiencing different circumstances. So at first, this practice might seem kind of forced or contrived, but this is okay. Um, over time, you may find that this changes and uh, a feeling of care emerges. And remember, heartfulness can be beneficial even in the absence of positive feelings. We like to think of the phrases as ringing a bell in the mind. And when we are listening for the reverberations in the body, this is not a prayer, but more of a way of connecting with our goodness of our heart right now in this very moment. Sometimes that may feel amazing and sometimes it might hurt, but this practice helps us learn about the relief of connection and the pain of disconnection. It seems like mindfulness should be all about opening the heart, right? Maybe, but that would only be one aspect of the practice. We could, we could call that aspect the cultivation side of the heartfulness. Um, we are cultivating or accessing feelings of warmth, connection, tenderness, joy, and kindness. And surprisingly, this type of practice can also bring the opposite feeling to center stage. We think we are, a, we are supposed to be feeling love, but we feel only anger or fear or sadness. So it's important to remember that this doesn't mean you are doing anything wrong. We can also think about the heartfulness practice as a digestion practice where we are digesting all the obstacles to open heartedness. This practice tends to highlight all that is ungrieved in the heart. We make peace with our past and absorb our experiences into a more integrated whole. Sometimes you say the phrase and feel nothing, no warmth, no sadness, nothing. And that's okay too. So there are potential, uh, three potential ways that heartfulness may work. Um, and that's, uh, that's so the three, Cultivation, digestion, and concentration. And try wishing kindness towards someone you will naturally care about, like a family member, a friend, or a, your beloved pet. Um, you may find that the feeling of warmth and love flow easier when wishing kindness towards people that naturally evoke those feelings. And use this practice to deeply reflect on that connection and love. We're not trying to change our preferences. A teacher once said that if you have a difficult person in your life, you don't have to like him or her, you just have to love him or her. Such a good line, uh -huh. right? We might interpret it to mean that we can have our preferences, 
We like some people and we don't like others. So those preferences are okay. We don't have to try to manufacture feelings or attraction or the wish to spend time with someone. Yet it's possible for us to not like them and still open our heart to the fullness of their situation, to see deeply the causes of their behavior, to see how they, just like us, they also long to be happy. We love them, even though we may not like them. And in all this, don't leave yourself out. Self-compassion is closely related to mindfulness. Even though two can be distinguished, self-compassion refers to our capacity for tenderness in the face of our own limitations, disappointments, or struggles. So it is different from self-esteem. Self-esteem is dependent on particular outcomes. So self-esteem can fluctuate based on one's life experiences. And self-esteem may also make individuals dependent on an external reinforcement. In contrast, self-compassion is not an evaluation of oneself, but it's a relationship to the experience. And uh, I think we have an article uh, for this also. Uh, we're going to share that as well. The role of self-compassion in development, a healthy way to relate to oneself. That is a very good article. And that is what I have for today. So as you practice, consider how you relate to difficult experiences and how you can introduce more self-compassion into your life. Okay, everyone. I hope you found tonight's session helpful. I know I did. Um, if you are not a member of Texas AFT, please go to www.texasaft.org to join. Um, this is your membership at dues bringing these sessions to you. And we are having discussions behind the scenes about how we can continue these Wellness Wednesdays through um, the summer because it has been positive for all of us that have participated in them. Here are some resources that Radula has um, shared with us throughout the course. And of course, uh, the other resources are the, the items that we have given away. And so our next thing is it is prize time. So let me get my little box here. We're going to see who... Um, who is going to be our big winners tonight. So the first thing that we're going to give out is a journal for slowing down, letting go, and loving who you are. Radula has talked extensively about journaling, and so I think this will be perfect for, um, for this subject. So let's see who our winner is going to be. Griselda Noyola. Is Griselda Noyola in the group? Okay. Griselda? Okay, Griselda's not here. So let's go to the next person. Ritu Kapur. Ritu? I don't see them. Stephanie Silva. Stephanie, are you here tonight? Stephanie? 
No, Stephanie? Okay. Lisa Bond. Lisa Bond. Okay, y'all's chances are increasing. Lisa Bond is here. Is she? She's she not here. Me? Oh, okay. Sorry. I didn't have my chat box pulled up. I'm sorry. Can you unmute yourself, Lisa? Hello. <laughs> hey, sorry about that. I have like all these screens going and so. <laughs> Yay, I'm here. <laughs> okay, perfect. All right. You are the winner of the present not perfect um, book. So if you will just respond to the email that I sent you just confirming this session with your, your name, your mailing address, and make sure you put that you won the journal so I can remember. <laughs> Congratulations. We'll Thank, you. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. So our next winner is going to be for the car diffuser, and it's, it will fit perfectly in your cup holder in your car. It has USB ports, um, and you can put some essential oils. So we, if you live in Houston and you're going around 610 and you get all stressed out because the way people drive, you can just breathe in real deep, some lavender oil, and the world will be a wonderful place. So um, do we have a Jamie Minya? Jamie, are you here tonight? Okay, no Jamie, okay. What about Patricia Gonzalez? I'm here. Hello. Yay. Okay, but yeah. how are you doing? So you are the winner of the car diffuser. So just respond to my email with your name, your address, and uh, what you won, the car diffuser. It had really great reviews. So you'll have to Thank let us you. know how it, uh, how it is. And Thank then our last item for tonight is a yoga mat. So we're hoping that we're kind of kind of got that on the horizon, hopefully. And do we have a Laverne Neely here tonight? Laverne Neely, I see your name. You can unmute yourself, Laverne. Yes, I am here. Okay, awesome. So you are the winner of the yoga mat that could possibly come in real handy in a couple of weeks. Yeah, with wellness. Day. So you will be prepared to go. So just respond to my email with what you want and your address, and I will get that sent directly to you. Thank you. And it is evaluation time. So let me. Okay. Launch my poll. So if you'll just take a quick minute and fill out this evaluation on how tonight's session went. We, Radula and I, actually, we go through all this data and look at it and see what you all are saying. So please take a, a moment to do that. We thank you for joining us tonight, and we'll be back next Wednesday um, at 6 o'clock to do our fifth session. So please join us and tell your friends to please join us.